Hello and welcome to Maya with Haste. In this video, we're going to take a look at procedural textures, that is creating your own procedural content using the special nodes inside of Maya's Hypershade. However, those procedural textures need to be baked or burned out before we can use them in outside programs such as Unity. And we're going to take a look at how to do that very quickly. So first, let's create an object to use. Let's just make a simple cube in this case right there. Let's go to Windows, Material slash Texture Baking Editors, and Hypershade. Once again, we have our Fong 1 default material in the scene. Let us create a new material by left-clicking on Fong and holding down and dragging it into our workspace. Let's call it cube checkerboard underscore M. Now, several of these nodes we can use to create procedural content, such as the checker, fractal, noise, ramp, and several others. So let's middle mouse click and drag a checker node in here. We can see we get a checker node as well as a place 2D texture node for modifying how it looks on the screen. Let's zoom in and take a look at what we have here. So we didn't cover this in the previous video, but we have these different connections, these different inputs and outputs to these various nodes. And it's up to us to link them in a way, well, any way we want, really. In this case, I want the out color of the checkerboard to go into the color node of the cube material. So let's click here with the left or middle mouse. And what you'll notice is you get this arrow. And this arrow snaps to any of these nodes on the sides. But what we can actually do is drag over here. And this is very intelligent. As we drag around here, one, if you hold down on an area with, an, with a plus icon next to it, indicating there's more information, it expands, allowing you to bring in more information here. So let's click here on the green dot, the out color, and let's place it into the color of this object. Now there are many places that we could be putting this checkerboard into, that is this color information. And actually if you hover over one of these icons, such as color, you'll notice it breaks out and now we have the individual colors. So you could potentially place individual values for each of the R, G, and Bs. However, the out color for this object is actually composed of a vector of type three. It has three different colors in total, an R, G, and a B field. So let's just link color up to color and we're done. Now we could have done them individually like this, where each individual R, G, and B goes to the R, G, and Bs there. So you'll notice that in our material view now, we're showing this checkerboard over this object. So let's switch from the shader ball to the sphere. And here you can see exactly what it's doing. Now we can modify this checker however we want. That is the power of procedural content. We can come over here, click on this node, go back over here into the viewer, and take a look at the different color values and modify them on the fly. Choose a different color, such as green, and now we have a green checkerboard. You can also link these together to make more complicated objects. So for instance, in the case of the checker here, but we can actually do a lot more with procedural content. For instance, we can actually use other content, files, or procedural information to fill in the color values for this checkerboard. So say you didn't want a solid color, but you wanted an image in each one of those blocks. Let's use a ramp type this time by left mouse clicking, dragging that over into our view. What I'm going to do here is actually drag the out color from this ramp and place it into color one. Now you'll notice color one wasn't on here by default. This little orange icon at the top by clicking on it, I can showcase all of the different input parameters that aren't shown there right now. In this case though, all I did was I clicked and I dragged onto that orange field and I chose which field I wanted to populate. Now we can edit our ramp to be far more interesting looking. I can go in here and click on this ramp area and begin adding my own colors. So in the ramps attributes, we get to specify as many colors as we want to and it will interpolate between those values. I can click on these circles at the top and what happens is I get to choose their individual colors. So I can do red or yellow. Let's click here and go to select a color now. Choose a yellow color. Click here, maybe a green color. And you'll see here it linearly interpolates between these values because we've chosen the interpolation type to be linear right here. And you can see here that this ramp is feeding color one of our checkerboard which of course is then feeding into this object, which is then of course feeding into our material. Now let's actually see what this will look like. Click on our cube, right click, go to assign existing materials and choose that cube checkerboard material. And here you have it, our very interesting checkerboard with its ramp. In our next video, we're gonna take a quick look at UV coordinates, but let's just take a sneak peek right now. Let's go to windows and then UV editor here in this case, you actually see the ramp we generated, the image, the procedural content behind us. And of course, where our cube is sampling information. A little bit difficult to see. Let me see if I can't choose a different mode. So here you can see how this cube is laid out and where it's actually sampling this information. And we'll get more into this in the following video. But I did want you to see why those colors are showing up where they are. 
Now the problem here is that this is procedural content. If there's no file associated with it, no PNG, no JPEG, no Targa file, we need to generate that. And in Maya LT, we're actually going to go to Windows, Material slash Texture Baking Editors, and we'll go into first the Texture Baking Settings. Now this is going to look different for you if you're using the full edition of Maya. In Maya LT, the rendering panel has basically been removed and been replaced with this texture baking panel instead. Now there's a lot of settings in this and it could take quite a few videos to go through it all. But for right now, to make this easy and quick so you can create your own textures and get them out of Maya, let's just take a look at the sampling panel and the baking panel. Here in the sampling panel, this is how many samples it's actually going to take. The more samples per pixel you take, the better things are going to look. However, it's going to take more time to process. I would just leave them at the default values of one and two right now, unless you notice you're having, well, maybe your textures are coming out poorly or you have sort of artifacts. And in which case you can raise these up to whatever you want to. Now, to get this to burn out to a file, so to speak, or bake as it's called, we're gonna click the baking panel. In the baking panel, it's important for us to, now in the baking panel, you have to choose your target surface as well as your source surfaces. Right now, since we're only dealing with one object, I'm gonna just click bake selected surfaces. So whatever I have selected is going to be the surface that I'm working with. However, if you're working with a scene full of lots of geometry, you can add individual objects yourself, remove them, or clear your entire list. This is very important if you're doing more complicated baking. Baking just doesn't mean burning out these procedural textures. It could also mean burning out lighting information. But for right now, let's just click Bake Selected Surface. I have my cube selected. I'm gonna scroll down and ignore some of this stuff right now because it's just not important. Here in Texture Bake Settings, we choose the size of our image. Remember to try to go with a power of two if you can. So I would go with 1024 and probably just down sample afterwards to 512 if it was too large. We get to choose a directory where this file is going to be saved to, the file name that we want to be working with, and then of course, the file format. Maya defaults to Targa. I personally like PNG better, so I'm going to switch to that. Scroll on down to the bottom, and under Outputs, you're going to specify what outputs you want. There are many kinds of outputs, such as illumination or normal mapping, displacements, or even other parameters under Advanced Settings. We just want to capture the raw color information and that is referred to as albedo in our case. Now we can close the panel, and if we want to, we can go to shading right here, and instead of going into window and then material texture baking and doing this, we can come under shading, and here in this last bit, we can of course access the settings again if we want to, or if we click this button right here, this is the texture bake icon. Click that, and it's going to go ahead and bake out our texture. So now Maya has baked this information out for us. It's basically used the UV coordinates of our cube object, that was the information under window UV editor, to determine how to burn this texture out. It then saved the file out. Now in my case, mine's under Maya projects default, and then the turtle directory, and then baked textures. And then you can see that image right there. And of course we can open this in Photoshop and further edit it if we want to. We can go ahead and set this object up to use that texture now. So let's go to Window, Material Texture Editors, Hypershade, come in here. We no longer need this complicated set of nodes creating this object. We could get rid of all this information if we want to. Drag in a file instead. Hook up the color of the file to the color of the material. Click on the image name for the file. And then just navigate to Turtle, Bake Textures, and that PNG file we have. And of course, if we come over here in our viewport, everything looks fine. Now with a PNG, any area that lacked information is going to be transparent, and that's why this object has all this transparency information going on. Now if you want to, you can always get rid of transparency by going back into the hypershade, and you'll note we have this orange node coming out from here and going into transparency. If we select that and hit the delete key, now no transparency information is being applied to that object, and here of course you can see in this view that the transparency information now is gone and the rest of the object is black because, well, the rest of our image is black. Hope you enjoyed this video and you can see how important it is to use procedural textures to create interesting content, but that you can also export out this content to files for you to manipulate and send into other applications such as Unity. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and post down below with other ideas of videos you'd like me to do about Maya. Thanks again. Bye.